In the time I've been in VR, not only as a content creator, but as a consumer, I've seen many games go from being marketed as the best VR game ever to bless a headset, to in reality end up being a massive pile of ugly disappointment. And even though most of my reviews I spend time saying what could have been done to make it better, the same mistakes are made time and time again. And I think the main issue that keeps reoccurring is a lack of understanding of what the audience wants and the developers simply not playing enough VR games that we all enjoy right now. Now, before I continue, I'm not saying developers shouldn't step up into the unknown and dare to bring us something new. Far from it. I actually encourage it. VR is an evolving new technology and it's very exciting to be involved in. At any time, everything we take as standard today could change into something better for the masses in the future. But with games like Bulletstorm, a pretty solid IP from 2011 being ported into VR as an example, was released with exceptionally dull gameplay due to unchallenging AI, mediocre action mixed in with exceptionally poor quality control means for all the effort the developers are now putting into revamping hype and fixing the issues, I fear the damage is done, especially when the VR fan base is still so small and lackluster releases like this echo around for an exceptionally long time, despite the good intentions from the developers to fix it. Games like No Man's Sky are an exception to this, and a rare case where a game that promised so much at released and completely undelivered, years later turns out to be now one of the best games to grace consoles and VR, and is still being worked on eight years later. But in today's video, I wanted to go over one of the biggest disappointments of them all, and how it can have catastrophic catastrophic effects on both VR adoption, the trust of the consumers, the audience, and the teams behind the games, and the best example right now for that is Hitman VR Reloaded. XR Games have been reported and now confirmed to be in the process of laying off 73 of the 100 plus employees they have right now. This is obviously incredibly sad news for everyone involved, but I think this has happened for a few reasons. Hitman 3 VR Reloaded was in development for, I believe, over three years, probably costing investors and the company millions of dollars and pounds, and it somehow still turned out to be abysmal. So what were Hitman's failures? Well, I believe it was mostly lack of VR implementation. Sure, we all want our favourite flat screen IPs to come over to VR. And UEVR is a fantastic way to get close to experiencing what it would be like to see and feel a game you enjoy on a flat screen in a whole new way. But this situation and the expectations behind UEVR are different. You're buying a flat screen game and you're choosing to experience it for free in VR. Therefore, it's entirely on you if you enjoy it, and there's zero expectations if it's good or not. But when you're buying a game made or even ported officially in VR, there is expectations. I think XR Games believed, as many other developers have in the past, that if you bring a massive IP to VR, this is enough of a reason to release a game with so many glaring issues, and they hope that players will overlook things like bad frame rates, laughable situations like climbing, for example, without the use of your arms, and and button presses for everything would win the day. It's like being told to swallow something that looks bad, tastes bad, and being told to like it. Games like Horizon Call of the Mountain did it right for me. It was a brand new story made to focus on the strengths of VR and built from the ground up, bringing players into the world of the IP versus dealing with the constraints of trying to make a flat game feel like a VR game, which is the case for both Bulletstorm and Hitman. What also makes this situation for XR Games worse is the company looks to be in future trouble too. Now I've been hands on with Zombie Army VR on PSVR 2, and that was a mediocre experience as well, missing many VR interactions for reasons I didn't understand. The graphics were average and being part of the Sniper Elite franchise, the slow-mo sniper shots are a signature part of the enjoyment and it was massively underwhelming with the X-ray shots just not doing any visible damage. XR Games are also currently working on Starship Troopers VR which is already being heavily scrutinised by the community not only because the four seconds of gameplay that was shown in the one minute trailer didn't really show a game of except quality that people were expecting for such a massive movie IP like Starship Troopers, but it is associated with the developers behind Hitman, causing a ripple effect within the VR community to either tread carefully or simply pigeonhole it before it's even released into a category of a game to avoid. The reaction to Hitman also caused issues between 
the community and left the quest being blamed as a platform that ruins VR games. This is why I mentioned the damage poor VR games can have on the look of the technology as a whole because the Quest is the most popular VR headset brand in the world right now and it currently holds the flag for many people on the outside looking in to what they are going to invest into. It makes all the developers the most money and is about to hit a massive turning point with the release of Quest 3S, easily being the most bang for your buck headset in the VR industry pretty much ever and with developers releasing games made purely focused on the new Snapdragon Gen 2 chip found in Quest 3 and Quest 3S we can now leave the Quest 2 era behind and from what I've seen so far we'll start to see mid-tier PC graphics on standalone devices that will redefine expectations with games like Batman Behemoth and Metro leading the charge from 2024 into 2025. So what can be done to avoid this terrible situation from happening in the future? I believe a clearer and more honest approach to marketing is a big win. Show players what you're working on and the development behind the game in stages. This not only brings natural followers to your own social media to keep up to date with the progression, but also shows how much work is going into the project from a developer's standpoint. When it comes to porting a game from the flat screen to VR, the messaging again needs to be clearer. And I think this was a massive misstep by XR Games and I believe their focus was pretty much only on pre-orders with false hype that doesn't lead to success especially on Quest which allows refunds with under two hours gameplay but also lets buyers leave store reviews in the form of ratings and comments. On PlayStation this is a massive frustration for me personally but then again so is store creation but that's a conversation for another video. I also believe playtesting is hugely important from an experienced VR perspective Perspective and not just technical testing. A good game technically doesn't mean it's a good game for the player to enjoy. So to summarise, honesty and clarity is the biggest win. The VR community love it when developers attend podcasts and share news on the progression of upcoming projects and the focus on pre-orders should be something that comes naturally alongside this marketing. As a creator who doesn't accept hardly any sponsorships due to the control or constraints put on me by accepting a sponsorship, you should let the game do the talking and the creator share how they feel rather than trying to steer the narrative and avoid known issues and massaging this with promising updates that might never happen. We have a fantastic technology available to us right now and it's pretty much every gamer's dream to actually step into the games they love and I hate seeing what is happening to XR Games who came from making one of the best arcade VR style shooters with Zombie Army to being seen as untrustworthy and avoidable. This is of course happening across the entire gaming industry right now with lackluster games being released due to having to hit release dates that are simply not achievable. I'm not saying I have the answers but the issues are pretty clear and the results of these issues are too. I hope Hitman leaves a lasting taste to other VR developers thinking they can trick or deliver mediocre games and get some return on the investment. As Nintendo's Shigeru Miyamoto famously said, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is bad forever.